Hello. Welcome to the World Storytelling Cafe. I'm delighted to be having this opportunity to perform for you today. My name is Daniel Morden. You find me here in my office, which is full of treasures. The rest of the family call it the Dan Cave. Now, I've been asked by the World Storytelling Cafe to tell a tale for families. Now, normally when I tell a tale for families, there are families. And I talk to them and they say things back. So, what I've done is I've bought an extremely sophisticated camera and microphone that are two-way. So, as I speak to you, I want you to reply, and I will hear you, and also I will see you, so you better not pick your nose. I'm looking at you. Once upon a... Let's try that again. Once upon a... Thank you. Once upon a time. Long, long ago, BC, which means before coronavirus, long ago, a widow had three daughters, and the two daughters, they'd reached that age when they thought they knew everything. Their names were Holly and Dolly. The youngest one was called Molly, Holly, Dolly and Molly. So Holly and Dolly, they went to their mother and they said, we've had enough of this. We don't want to live here anymore. We're off. Little Molly went, will you take me? Will you take me? Will you take me? No, we will not take you, said Holly and Dolly, because you are embarrassing. Their mother. She went into the kitchen and baked three loaves of bread. Each loaf she broke into two pieces, a little piece and a big piece. Holly, in came her eldest daughter, tell me, do you want the little piece and my blessing or the big piece and my curse? What? A word of what? Well, what do I want? Do I want a little piece of bread or do I want a big piece of bread? I want a big piece of bread, of course. So the mother gave Holly the big piece and whispered a secret spell under her breath. Out went Holly and in came Dolly. Would you like a little piece of my blessing or a big piece of my... Give me the big bit. She handed over the big piece and she whispered a spell under her breath. Out went Dolly. In came. Would you like the little piece, am I? Or the big piece, am I? Mother, all I've ever wanted in my whole life is your blessing. So the mother handed over the little piece and she whispered another spell, another secret spell under her breath. Holly and Dolly set off. Of course, Molly wanted to go with them. But very quickly, she got on their nerves. So they turned on her and they tied her to a fence post. And then laughing, they walked on. Little did they know, behind them, Molly's mother's blessing flew down and made Molly strong and she tore the fence post out of the ground and as Holly and Dolly were walking they heard a noise behind them and they turned and they looked and there was Molly running towards them with a fence post tied to her back. Whoopee! When she caught up with them she shook off the fence post. The two of them walked on with Molly. Then they turned on her and they tied her to a tree. Laughing, they walked away. But Molly's mother's blessing. <laughs> Holly and Dolly. They 
turned and they looked. Whoopee! Molly ran towards them with a tree tied to her back. She shook off the tree when she caught up with them. They walked on. And after a little while, Holly and Dolly, this time they turned on her and they tied her to a barn. They walked on. But Molly's mother's blessing flew down. <coughs> Holly and Dolly, as they walked, oh no, oh no. They turned and they looked. Oh yes. Now, is there anything in the world more embarrassing than your little sister catching you up with a barn tied to her back, shouting, Whoopee! The three of them walked on till night came. They were lost in a forest. They saw a light between the trees. They came to a house that was mahusive. It was the biggest house they'd ever seen. Who would live in such a humongous domicile? They walked to the door and knocked. The door opened and over them loomed a giantess. A female giant. If you please, said Molly, we're lost in the forest. We just want one night's rest here in your home and then we'll walk on, we promise. Lost in the forest, said the giantess. Oh, good. Uh, I mean, oh dear. When my husband gets back and he sees you, he will be delighted to eat, uh, meet you. Come in, come in. The girls went in to the kitchen to see the giant and his wife had had three daughters between them. The giant's daughters, they weren't very friendly. They smirked behind their hands and they slurped bowls full of stew. <laughs> The giantess ladled out three more bowls of soup for the girls, but Holly, Dolly and Molly, they couldn't eat. They were too afraid. Their hands were shaking so much they could hold neither bowl nor spoon. Then they heard stomping coming through the forest. The front door swung open and in. He came, hairy, scary, broad and beastly, staring, glaring, nostrils flaring. The giant, he turned and he slid a bolt across the top of the front door and he said, Now, see girls, you're safe. <laughs> Tonight you share a bed with my daughters. Come with me, all of you. So the three girls and the giant's three daughters went upstairs and there was a big bed in a bedroom. The giant did a strange thing then. He opened a drawer and pulled out three golden necklaces and he put a golden necklace round the neck each of his three daughters. Then he opened another drawer and pulled out three necklaces of horse hair, the hair from a horse's tail. And he put a necklace of horse hair around the neck of Holly, then Dolly, then Molly. Then he went downstairs to slurp his stew. Once he'd gone, all six of them jumped into the bed, blew out the candle, closed their eyes very quickly all around Molly. They were snoring, but Molly pinched herself to stay awake. And once she knew everyone else was asleep, she swapped the necklaces. Downstairs in the kitchen, the giant said to his wife, I want those girls for breakfast. But one of them, she's clever. So go upstairs. Give those three girls a whack on their head with your club. I can't, said the giant's wife. If I go up there in the dark and start whacking, I'll whack our daughters by mistake. Ah, I'm not just a pretty face. Reach into the bed. Whenever you find a golden necklace, leave that one alone. Whenever you find a necklace of horse hair, give that one a whack. Molly, lying in bed, heard the giantess come up the stairs. 
heard the sound of the bedroom door open. She opened her eyes just a slit and she watched in the dark as the giantess reached out across the bed. She felt the giantess's rough fingers against her neck. And then she watched as the giantess touched the neck of her sister Dolly and then her sister Holly and then reached across the bed further to find necklaces of horse hair. Bock! 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 And then the giantess cackled and she went downstairs. Molly, as soon as the giantess was downstairs slurping stew with her husband, she woke up her sisters. They crept down the stairs as quietly as they could. They came to the front door. Oh, the front door was locked, bolted out of reach. But Molly, she climbed onto her sister's shoulders. And then she was tall enough slide the bolt down and free them. They crept out of the giant's house into the forest. Forests, I don't know if you've noticed, but they have trees. Trees, I don't know if you've noticed. They have branches. Branches, I don't know if you've noticed. They have twigs. Twigs fall on the ground. One of Molly's sisters trod on a dry twig and it gave a noise and the giant slurping stew. <laughs> He gave a roar and he was after them. She ran and he ran. She ran and he ran. Trouble was, Holly and Dolly were getting tired, so she had to lift them onto her shoulders to carry them. But at last, Holly and Dolly and Molly, they came out the dark forest and they came to a canyon, a chasm, a great gaping hole that went down to a river far below. They couldn't jump across. The gap was too wide. Molly pulled a hair out of her head, put it on the ground, and the hair stretched across the gap. A bridge of one hair. The three girls skipped across the bridge to safety. The giant came out the forest. <laughs> he couldn't cross a bridge of one hair. He was far too heavy for that. He looked across the gap and he saw Molly. You are over there, Molly Wappy. I am, though it is hard for you. You made me bash my daughter's three. I did, though it is hard for you. Molly Wappy, will you come again? Maybe. Ta-ta. Ah! She and her sisters walked until they came to a castle. And it was the castle of the king. So Molly went straight up to the sentries outside and she said, You, we just escaped from the giant in the dark forest. The guard, send word to his majesty the king. There are three young women here who've just escaped from the giant in the dark forest. When the king heard, fetch them in. Holly, Dolly and Molly were each given a bath and then they were each given fine clothes. And then Holly, Dolly and Molly were led into the great hall and a feast had been laid out for them. And the king, he talked to them. And he listened to them. And he knew which of these three girls was the one with the... He said, Molly, you've done a fine thing. Do you think you could do a finer still? You go back to the giant's house tomorrow and steal for me the golden comb that he took from my home many years ago. In return, I will give you... Yeah. Yeah. You see, this is an old story from long, long ago and things were different then because at this point in the story, the king says, if you fetch the golden comb, your oldest sister can marry my oldest son. But like I say, this is an old story from long ago. I mean, who in their right mind would marry into the royal family? <laughs> so I changed it. Molly, if you go back to the giant's house and steal for me the golden comb, he took from my home long ago in return. I will give you 
a treasure beyond measure. I will give you a toilet roll. Well, the next day, Molly, she set off. She walked back across the bridge of one hair, back through the dark, till she came to the giant's house. Now, Ivy was growing up the walls of the giant's house. Ivy is a clinging plant. It is not a person, nor is it that white stuff that sticks out of an elephant's face. Is that clear? So Molly, she could hear the giant and his family slurping stew. And Molly, she climbed up the ivy. And she came to the window of the giant's bedroom, so she opened the window. And she crept across the bedroom till she saw beside the bed on the table the golden comb. She put it between her teeth like a pirate with a dagger back across the bedroom, back through the window, down the clinging ivy. She walked out into the forest. Forests, they have trees. Trees have branches. Branches have twigs. Molly stepped on a twig. And when she did the twig, the giant, he gave a roar and he was after Molly. He ran and she ran, he ran and she ran. She came to the bridge of one hair. She ran across to safety. The giant, you are over there, Molly Whoppy. I am, though it is hard for you. You made me bash my daughter's three. I did, though it is hard for you. Now you stole my golden comb. I did, though it is hard for you. Molly Whoppy, will you come again? Maybe. Ta -ta. Ah! Molly went back to the castle of the king. The king, he arranged for a tremendous feast to be laid on in honour of Molly. And at the end of the feast, the king placed the comb on the wall of the hall. So all who looked upon it would wonder. Then he went to Molly. You did a fine thing, but could you do a finer thing if you go back to the giant's house and steal for me his golden quilt, the quilt that he took from me many years ago, in return, I will give you a packet of antibacterial wipes. day Molly went, made her way back across the bridge of one through the dark till she came to the giant's house <coughs> up the through the across the she came to the bed she put the quilt on her shoulder she tiptoed back across the through the down the clinging into the forest. Oh, those twigs. The giant. Roar! He was after Molly. She ran and he ran. She ran and he ran. At last she came to the bridge of one hair. She skipped across to safety. The giant. You are over there, Molly Whoppy. I am, though it is hard for you. You made me bash my daughter's three. I did, though it is hard for you. Then you stole my golden comb. I did, though it is hard for you. Now you stole my golden quilt. I did, though it is hard for you. Molly Whoppy, will you come again? Maybe. Ta-ta. Ah! When the king saw that Molly had brought the golden quilt, a tremendous feast was laid on. And at the end of the feast, the king placed the quilt on the wall of the hall beside the comb so that all who looked upon it would wonder. Molly Whoppy, he said, you've done a remarkable thing, but could you do an even more remarkable thing? If you go back to the giant's house tomorrow and take from me the golden ring he stole, Many years ago, 
In return, I will give you a bottle of hand sanitizer. Next day, Molly Wade made her way back across the bridge of one through the dark till she came to the giant's house. <laughs> Up the clinging through the Across there, there was the golden ring. She picked it up, but just as she did, out from under the bed came a giant hand that grabbed her. The giant came out. He said, Aha, I knew you couldn't resist coming back for my golden ring, so I had my family downstairs slurping while I waited for you. Molly Wap, now I have you, and I will punish you. Molly Wappy, if I had done to you all the terrible things that you have done to me, how would you punish me? Oh, that's easy, said Molly. I put you in a sack with a dog and a cat and a needle and a thread and a pair of scissors, and I'd hang the sack from the roof of the kitchen like a piñata, and then I'd go out into the forest and get myself a nice big whacking stick, and then I'd come back in, and I'd draw the stick behind my back and give the sack a great big whack. The giant went, that's just what I'll do to you. So he went downstairs and he put Molly in a sack with a dog and a cat and a needle and a thread and a pair of scissors. And he told his wife to keep an eye on it while he went out into the forest to find the best possible whacking stick. So Molly, in the sack with the dog and the cat, she was stroking the dog, she was stroking the cat, she was stroking the dog, she was stroking the cat. Then she went, ooh, and the giantess in the kitchen. Molly, ooh, and the giantess, ooh. Molly, what be? Why are you making that funny noise inside the sack? Oh, are you there, said Molly. Thank you very much for putting me inside your magic sack. Magic sack, said the giantess. It isn't a magic sack, it's just a, a sack for love. It's just a normal sack. Oh no, said Molly. It's a magic sack. This sack is like, um, like a TARDIS sack. Like a wardrobe to Narnia. There's a whole magic world inside this sack. Is there? I didn't know that, said the giantess. Oh, yes, said Molly. Let me try and describe the wonders before me. I'm walking through a garden, and in the garden I can see rose bushes and hedges, and cut in the shapes of peacocks and dragons, and wonderful monsters, and, and now I'm walking towards a house of... Oh, I'm coming to the door of the house. Just let me open up the door. I'm turning the handle of the door now. And I'm looking inside. Why have you gone quiet, Molly? Said the giantess. Molly said, well, I can't describe the wonders that I behold here inside this house. Yes, you can, said the giantess. I want to know what's behind the door and inside the house. Tell me, Molly. Uh, oh, said Molly. Well, it's a... Oh. What? What's that? Oh. Well, said Molly, it isn't that. Oh. It's just, that's the only word I can say. I, I just can't find the words to describe the most, it's just the most beautiful. Oh. Describe it. What is it? Tell me what it is. I want to know what it is. Oh. Molly, what can you see behind the door? Molly said. Oh, the giantess. I wish I could see. I wish I could see. Well, said Molly, I tell you what, I'll get out and you get in. So she got the pair of scissors and she snicked a hole in the bottom of the sack. She climbed out the sack. She pushed the giantess inside the sack with a needle and thread. She sewed up the gap. Then she picked up the giant's ring. She crept across. She heard the giant approaching. She hid behind the front door. The giant came in with his whacking stick. He walked into the kitchen. He drew the stick behind his back and gave the sack a great big whack. Inside the sack, his wife said, Ow! 
But the cat said, no, so the giant didn't hear. He drew the stick behind his and gave the sack a great big. Inside the sack, his wife said, oof, but the dog said, woof, so the giant didn't hear. She, he drew the stick behind his back, but when he did, he looked over his shoulder to see Morley tiptoeing away from the house. She turned, she saw the giant, and she went, and the giant, he looked at the sack, and he looked at Molly, and he gave a roar, and he was after her. She ran and he ran, she ran and he ran, until at last she came to the bridge of one hair. She ran across to safety, the giant, you are over there, Molly Wappy. I am, though it is hard for you. You made me bash my daughter's three. I did, though it is hard for you. Then you stole my golden comb. I did, though it is hard for you. Then you stole my golden quilt. Though I did, though it is hard for you. Now you stole my golden ring. I did, though it is hard for you. You made me bash my lovely wife. I did, though it is hard for you. Bonnie Wuppy, if I was over there and you were over here, how would you get me? Oh, that's easy said Molly. If I was a giant, I'd just jump down the chasm till I came to the river. I'd drink all the water and then I'd just walk across the dry river bed, climb up the other side and grab you. Ah, said the giant, you're too clever for your own good. And he jumped down the chasm, put his lips to the river and he began to <laughs> drink and drink and drink and the water kept flowing, so the giant kept drinking, and the giant got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until boom, he exploded. Molly, she went back to the castle of the king, and the king, he laid on a tremendous feast, and he placed the golden ring on the wall of the hall, beside the comb and the quilt. And do you know, Molly and her sisters, they lived happily ever after. And I sincerely hope that you do too. And I sincerely hope that we will meet again, either here, at the World Storytelling Cafe, or maybe somewhere in the real world, in real life. Thank you. People, wherever you are, thank you for listening to that last storyteller. What an amazing performance. And if you enjoyed it, the hat, look just below the story. If you're on the website, and I do encourage you to go to the website, and you can put a little in the hat. If you're in Texas, you've got a Texas hat here. I've got this in Kerrville. You could drop a dollar in, or two. If you're in England, you can drop a pound in, or more. If you're in Canada, well, you could drop a few dollars in. And maybe if you're right up north in Lapland, you could drop a few kroner in, or maybe a euro or two. It will be much appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget the hat and enjoy the stories.